Hey everyone, Kathy the Vegan Prepper here, and today I'm going to get some things, like all those things right there, <laughs> Tetris into my pantry shelves here. Um, so I had a recent Azure haul, also a recent Costco uh, trip, and there's just a whole bunch of stuff that I need to get into my shelves. I was just basically going to get the job done, and then I realized there might be some helpful stuff in this process. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and look at what I've got going on over here and just kind of go step by step with what I do with it all. And hopefully maybe you'll pick up some tips for your own spaces. I just want to say first off, I don't know that the perfect storage exists. Um, if you have figured out a way of making your pantry and food storage area look perfect all the time without ever having any extra bags of anything sitting around ever, um, I would love your tips. But I struggled for a really long time with trying to make everything perfect and trying to make everything look good and put away all the time. Again, I don't know that that exists. Um, so I think we're all doing the best that we can. Storage has kind of an ebb and a flow, I find. Sometimes it looks really neat and organized, usually when I've gone and used up a lot of the things. And then once I replace everything, it's a mess again <laughs> because now everything is out again. Um, and I think I don't need a better storage system. I don't even think I need more space because honestly, if I had more space, I'd probably end up with the same problem on a larger scale. Um, so basically for me personally, I, I finally just in the last little while kind of let go and allowed myself permission to not have it be perfect all of the time. This is enough work. It's a hard enough job without also feeling all the time like you're doing it wrong or beating yourself up for not having it perfect. So I've given myself permission to have my food storage space be a little messy sometimes. And so I just figured I'd start with that in case anybody out there struggles with the same thing or kind of needs, needs that little, needs permission to just relax a little bit. Um, but that being said, I will tell you kind of the things I think that are important that I work at making sure certain things happen in my food storage space, even if I can't get stuff put away right away. Um, how I'm putting stuff away, how I'm organizing it, and all of that. So let's just go ahead and get started. One more thing, I typically keep lists open on my phone. Uh, usually I'm using a, a program called Google Keep, either on my computer or on my phone. And that ends up being my running grocery list for um, almost any store, Costco primarily. Uh, probably the two places I shop the most or spend the most money are Azure Standard and Costco. Um, and so I also will keep my Azure cart open on my phone so that I can add things into the cart as I come across something and realize I need more of that thing. So like for instance, last night we were making soup. Uh, that's why my big spice tote is out um, because I was hunting through it yesterday making a soup. Um, and then we left, we ended up going to a performance and coming back. So it was like, we, we are busy right now. It's a very busy time. Um, and not everything is, is really, you know, perfect right now because it's just, we're just, I just, I'm meeting myself coming and going as my grandmother used to say. Um, but uh, I keep my Azure cart open on the phone. I noticed I need more parsley. And so I'm going to do parsley on a little Azure list, just like in my planner, because I'm filming on my phone. But just so that you know, that's one thing that I do make sure that I have available to myself in just right there is something to add stuff to lists where I am working so that I'm not distracted. Like if I have to go get my phone or if I have to go to my computer, there's a huge likelihood, ADHD, hello, that I'm going to get distracted. And so I try to make sure everything that I need is like right where I am so that I don't, I don't have a chance of getting distracted. Okay. Okay. So first off I'm identifying what is really like what needs to be done. And that's kind of the first thing that I like to do, especially when there's kind of a lot, <laughs> there's a lot of options and a lot of things that need to get put away. And so basically I need to figure out where all of these packages of cereal are going to go. I have this coconut sugar. I'm pretty sure my uh, container for that in my kitchen is basically empty, uh, which is why I bought another one. So I'm pretty sure I can get rid of that pretty quickly. My spices, I could just go ahead and stick back up on the top of my shelves up here, which is where that tote lives. But 
I'm pretty sure that there's a couple of things that I need to refill. Um, and then that will also help me fit more stuff in here, like as I refill. Um, so I'm going to look at refilling some things. Um, and then over here, I have some coconut milk that needs to get put away. That will get put away. Um, kind of it's way in the back of the shelf over here. Um, and I have some 25 pound bags of food that I hope I can deal with today the way that I like to deal with them. Um, and so we'll kind of talk about that as well. So looking at all of these things, um, I like to try to zero in first on the easiest jobs. As I mentioned, I, I can have a tendency to be distracted. And so I kind of do a quick assessment of all the things that need to be done. And then I zero in on the jobs that will require the least amount of work. And for me, I think that I think I hope it will be putting these away and also refilling my coconut sugar. So actually first, I think I'm going to go ahead and just go refill coconut sugar. And then I'll come back and show um, how I'm going to put these away and kind of where they go and talk a little bit about some of the storage that I have over here. All right, my coconut sugar container is empty, which is the handiest thing ever. And so I thought I would show how to see um, where to pull the string, opening boxes or bags like this. Um, if you crochet, it's probably really easy for you to see, but basically you're looking at whichever string will pull the, the loop out. And it's not always started for you like this, but whichever string, when you pull, it's pulling out these loops. And so then you can just sort of pull and it will open right up. So if you open one end and it just will not go and it kind of ties the stitches uh, tighter, then you know that that's not quite the right end but I just thought I would point that out. So anyway, I'm going to put this into this container and continue. All right, it's back in its spot. Right. Now that I have put the coconut sugar away, I'm going to get this cereal put away. And so one of the things that I have in my storage area are some totes. It's these three totes right here that are kind of my like in and out totes. Like they're, they're kind of meant, they're not for long-term storage. They are just to sort of hide and help keep neat and help you know potentially protect from bugs or whatever um be like one more line of defense even though i know it's not perfect but you know for things that i'm not going to seal that i'm going to leave in their paper but again all of the things that i put into these these totes still in their paper are meant to be used quickly um we're going to go through these rather fast so it's not something that i'm putting away for long-term storage long-term storage is in my other totes this is all long-term food storage every tote that you see here but they have been labeled of course differently <laughs> heavy winter clothes fall decorations um christmas decorations etc these are not that is not what is in these totes it's all long-term food storage and it's just part of my strategy to try to hide it in plain sight in case anybody does come into this room to help us not maybe look quite as crazy because people just have no concept of what um you know a lot of food storage actually looks like um, they think that it's an insane amount of food and really it's only enough for, you know, however many months, depending on how many people you have, which is not a lot. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of my strategy for trying to hide it a bit in plain sight. It would be a little bit more hidden in plain sight if a lot of this stuff was dealt with, but hopefully I'm going to kind of get to that as well. But yeah, these totes are not meant for long-term storage. They are meant to just sort of put stuff in that we're hopefully going to use up pretty quick. And so I'm going to try to get these. But now that I'm here, I'll try to get these things in there as well. And we'll see how successful I am. Okay, here we go. Jackpot. Um, the very first tote that was all the way on the right just has some of our extra sun butter in it. So basically, I'll pull these out because they're... Um, they're smaller. So that's kind of my, like, my very non-official professional <laughs> storage plan with this stuff is anything that could potentially get hidden gets put on top. Even though these are a little heavier, but they're not that heavy. So I'm going to uh, get the cereal in here and then put these things on top and then try to fit anything else like these guys in there. Um, if they fit, hopefully they will, hopefully they'll all fit in one tote. That would be amazing. I don't know that it will. Uh, but if not, then I'll have another tote right there that I can kind of put some stuff into. 
Okay, so I managed to get all the cereal plus um, hemp seeds, pumpkin seeds, and the sun butter back in here. So let's see if it will close. <laughs> this is kind of the one negative about these totes is that they hold a little less than they appear to because the lid um, sinks. You lose about an inch of space on the inside because the lid kind of goes down into it. But, haha, we got it. So this is now going to be the tote that sits right there and it will have you know all of these items in there and whenever i need to refill our little jar of cereal i'll come over here and grab that or when we need another sun butter or when i need to refill my pumpkin seeds or my hemp seeds you got it i'll be able to just pop in there and grab stuff um and then yeah it looks a little neater but this is the ebb and flow i'm talking about <laughs> because obviously i used up everything else that was in that tote and now i can fill it with other stuff and then um try to make things look a little neater at this point but you know, it's just, just never a hundred percent done. All right. Now the second tote definitely has room for the potato starch. It's a little, little bit heavier. Um, so here are my instant mashed potatoes, um, which I have a little two gallon bucket for. Um, and so when that's empty, I'll just refill it with these. Um, here are some steel cut oats. I have a jar of steel cut oats and when that's empty or maybe half empty, I can refill it from here. Um, and then here is the rest of my almond meal. Um, not very much. So, um, I did just refill my jar the other day, but I'm going to go ahead and add, this is what I'm talking about having my, my list open. I'm going to go ahead and add almond meal flour to my Azure cart so that it will go into my next order. So I make sure I have enough left to refill the jar again, cause that's not gonna really fully refill the jar. Um, and so one of the things that was in this box too was a bag of uh, my bulk coconut milk powder, which I get from Azure Standard. And I'm pretty sure my coconut milk powder is almost out um, over in my pantry. So I'm going to refill it with this and theoretically get this bag out of this tote. But now I'm gonna go ahead and tuck my potato starch in here <laughs> and then I will go. Uh, this though, I'm debating, it's it's a bit expired. My grandmother had purchased it. Um, and so these stuffings, by the way, I don't think they're really worth it if you happen to see it. It's basically just a bag of bread. Um, you have to add literally everything yourself. And so it will be vegan as long as you don't use, you know, non-vegan things that you add to it, but you have to add the celery, you have to add everything. There's no flavoring, no nothing in here. I'm not sure how worth it it is, but it is, it's been in my grandma's pantry for quite a while. So it already passed its best buy date. So I'm pretty sure it'll be okay for Christmas. I guess I'll keep it around. I don't like to keep expired bread products in my pantry. Um, this is not so bad because it's all contained in plastic. I will go ahead and keep this. We will use it for Christmas, um, which is, you know, just a week or two away. But I wanted to say, because of the fact that, you know, the, the bread products, oftentimes they have little weevil eggs or whatever in them. And the longer they sit, the more likely you are to have things hatch and infest your pantry. So I'm really careful about stuff that has like bread or whatever. Um, I do not like keeping it for very long outside of a sealed container in and of itself, um, just to try to um, like make sure that I'm not going to have any infestations going through and ruining my food storage. Um, so yeah, that, that's always a nerve wracking thing for me. But like I said, it's not that old and it's a best buy date, not an expiration date. And we're going to use it only within a couple weeks. So I will go ahead and keep that. I was already kind of debating, like, am I going to keep this or not? Like I would just like go toss it, you know, to the birds or whatever. <laughs> but, um, especially looks like I said, there's no, no flavor, no nothing in there. Um, but yeah, so that tote is now I'm considering full. Although now I will check to see if I need to refill my coconut milk powder. And if so, I will refill. Um, but regardless, even if the coconut milk powder goes back into this tote, um, I'll be able to close it and put it on my shelf. And now that shelf looks so much neater than it did before. All right, I went to do my refill and it almost all fit except for maybe about a cup and a half. And so basically my plan right now is next time I make my batch of hot chocolate, 
mix, which is very soon because we're in Christmas <laughs> season right now. I'm making a, I'm making a lot of hot chocolate right now. Um, I will just use this first and then that will empty my bag and make more room in my tote. Uh, so yeah, that's the plan for the little bit that was left over. Rather than waiting for the current, uh, the current container to empty, uh, because then when I go to refill it, I'm only going to have such a small amount that when stuff like this happens, I sort of just plan to use the small amount that's left. And then I'm also adding that to my Azure list. So, so far we've got parsley, almond meal, and coconut milk powder added to my Azure list as a result of this little job today. Um, and so the other thing that's great about this is not only that it helps to organize and gets things put away where they want to go or where they should go, um, it keeps you familiar with what you have on hand so that um, like I know, okay, I have another bag of mashed potato flakes in here. Like maybe I knew that before, but I had forgotten say, even though I hadn't, but pretend I did. Um, and then you see it when you're going and you're like, oh yeah, I have mashed potatoes. I don't need to order more um, or, or whatever. So anyway, keeping yourself familiar with your pantry contents, especially as the pantry gets bigger <laughs> is really important. <laughs> Third tote is my lasagna tote. <laughs> so it's where I have kept all of my tinkiata lasagna um, for making a lasagna because it's a relatively frequent dish in our house. Uh, but I knew there was a little bit of space and I have this um, five pound bag of tinkiata brown rice shells, which I purchased also through Azure Standard. Now, um, one five pound bag, fits pretty much perfectly into a two gallon bucket. Um, but when you buy it in bulk, you buy it 10 pounds at a time. So one of the bags in the box will go in the bucket and then I have to figure out what I'm doing with the other bag. So for now, I'm gonna tuck this into here because I know I have room in the lasagna tote and then that'll just sort of make sense. I guess this will end up being like the pasta tote. <laughs> um, pasta can be tricky because it does take up a lot of space. Uh, but one of the pluses, I guess, is that it's very light. And so um, you don't have to worry about filling something with pasta and then not being able to lift it usually. Um, so anyway, that's what the third tote has and what I put away into the third tote. Um, and then I will get started on, I think, the spices next. All right, so that whole shelf looks cleaner now. Stuff is put away as much as possible. And so I'm going to start on the spices, I believe. I still will do that. But as I'm standing here kind of looking and I'm seeing this bottom shelf, I'm realizing I might be able to fit a lot of these kind of condiments that are just sitting out. I might be able to tuck them into the shelf a bit. Um, or tuck some of the stuff on the side in. So I think I will look at that after I have done my spices. Okay, first step to dealing with the spices is to look at what I have going on in my spice drawer. I have kind of a three-tiered spice storage system, uh, which I cover in one of my videos. I can link down below. Um, and so basically I'm going to see if there's anything in here that really needs a refill and I will see if I have something in the spice tote <laughs> to refill uh, in my, my little second tier spice drawer here to hopefully um, use up some of the space in the tote and fit more in there. I don't believe I'm going to film this entire process. <laughs> I'm just going to look and see, like for instance, right here, I see minced garlic. That is pretty empty. So I probably can go ahead and fit a bag of minced garlic into here. And then that frees up space in my tote and also gets me nice and refilled. Uh, so I'm just going to go through that, um, through all of my spices and do that. And then I'll come back and show you kind of where we are in the spice tote as a result of that. And here is the before of the tote, in case anybody forgot. <laughs> I have finished all of the refilling that I can do at this point. I did actually go ahead and finally add my, I, there used to be one spot open back here. Um, I did finally add the last uh, container. I decided to make a container of smoked paprika. We use a lot of that, and so I'm putting it in my uh, kind of second level 
uh, spice thing. Uh, all of this is really explained in that video. <laughs> I'm going to link down below, but the, like the basic gist of it, the reason that I have kind of a three level thing, level one being the small, the small bottles that you often see behind me when I'm filming in my kitchen, the ones that are right by the stove that I can grab. This is what I refill the small bottles from, or I will work directly from these containers if I have to use, say, like a lot, like say I'm making a spice mix, such as chili powder, which I'm making now from all of my own, you know, the spices that I have on hand, um, then I can pull these out and I'm using, you know, like a half cup of spice at a time. And so I have this here. The other really great thing about this system is, for instance, I ran out of my minced onion, but I ran out of it in my spice tote, not in the working spices of my kitchen. So now I still have a full quart of minced onion that I can be using in my kitchen, but I'm going to be adding minced onion to my Azure cart so that hopefully I can get it <laughs> next month when I order so that I will replenish my stock and I will never, I myself as I am cooking will never experience running out because I allow myself to kind of, you know, run out quote unquote of my spice um, at that level rather than the usable level. I hope that I'm explaining that well. Um, but having that kind of three tiered system is just so wonderful for me because I literally never run out of my spices now. Um, and that that's just, it's working very well for me anyway. And obviously I have this absolutely beautiful drawer, which just so happened to fit all of these containers perfectly. And it just really, really worked out for me. <laughs> this is one storage area where I feel like I really did get it right. Uh, but anyway, there's certain things I can't refill chili flakes. For instance, there's no extra in my tote basil. I actually tried to order this last month, but that didn't come from Azure. Um, so I'm adding that to my list as well. Hopefully it comes again. Um, and then I have these two mixes here, curry and curry powder and garam masala, which I am going to start trying to make myself as well, like the chili powder. Um, I'm very excited to try the garam masala recipe from, uh, Indian for Everyone by Anupi Singla. I love Anupi Singla's books. They have a lot of spice blends in the books, uh, but they're huge batches. <laughs> so um, you use a lot of spices in Indian cooking and I use a lot of spices in, in any kind of cooking I do. Uh, so having, you know, bulk spices on hand is very handy for beginning to make your own blends. Here is her garam masala recipe page. I'm not going to show the recipe, obviously, because it's not my recipe, but see, it, it's making two and a half cups worth of <laughs> spices, so it's pretty big batches, um, but this is the book. It's actually, it's a really excellent book. She has, um, like, uh, substitutions for everyone. Uh, I guess, you know, hence the title. I believe she herself is vegan, but her family is not. Uh, but she does offer options for every single dish in the book, uh, vegan options to do. Um, and it's just pretty great. So this, this is a really great book, a really great resource. I picked mine up used, I believe on Amazon or books.com. I can't remember. Uh, but anyway, I will link this book down. <laughs> You're getting the glamour shot, huh? I'll link this book down below <laughs> in um the uh in the description uh so that you guys can go check that out if you would like to. All right, so now basically the last step of the spice project at this point is just being uh trying to get the spices back in. So one of the things that I did do um was anything that used to be closed with a clip, I went through and sort of rolled it up and closed it with tape instead. So this will save space. Um, also, you won't have to worry as much about stuff falling out of your bags. Um, clips used to work for me beautifully until I started storing so much uh, in my bulk spice department. <laughs> so it doesn't really work anymore. And so I'm just doing tape now to keep these sealed um, and to also help eliminate air space. So what I would like to do too is I will try to get all of this into the tote if necessary. I think what I want to do, even if it's not necessarily the best decision, although I don't know why it wouldn't be, I would like to take bags like this one, for instance, like my minced garlic. I mean, for one thing, we go through garlic so fast. I don't think I have to worry too much about it, but I think I would like to take these and cut a little slit 
to be able to let this air out because look how big this is it could be like only that big if i let the air out and then taped it um and i think i will do that to some of these extra puffy bags if I can't get everything in there and then hopefully doing that I'll be able to fit it all so we'll see. labeled birthday party supplies but it's it's my spice tote all right the coconut milk is back there and and the cans that were left in the box that was already there i went ahead and just put on top uh so that i can still grab them um and i since i'm down here anyway <laughs> i was kind of planning on trying to put some of these items down into this shelf now that i've been making room down here um i have uh, for instance, we've been slowly going through all of our gallons of apple cider vinegar and like what's left in here is just a tiny bit. I will go ahead and go refill the quart that we currently have in our kitchen. Um, and so that gallon jug will not need to be stored here anymore. And I still have, how many do I have left? I only have two gallons of apple cider vinegar left as far as gallon containers. Uh, but I did recently switch uh, to the five gallon container. So that's how I'm going to start purchasing it now. And then, yeah, once we get through this, I'm not going to be storing gallons of apple cider vinegar down here anymore. It's going to be in my five gallon, um, my five gallon bucket, which I also have purchased a pump for. So once we get into that, um, I will be able to utilize the pump and work with it. Uh, from there. So anyway, I've just been, and also clearing out, I think we cleared a bottle of balsamic vinegar or is that? No, I think that's this. Yeah. So we still have some balsamic left, but anyway, we cleared, what, we cleared one of these recently. Oh yeah. It was a gallon of olive oil. I finally got through it. It takes us a long time to go through oil. Uh, so I did finally refill. I have a Costco bottle of olive oil that I just keep refilling with the olive oil from Azure Standard. Um, I've got some various vinegars we use for our salad dressings. Um, we eat a lot of salad and do a lot of vinegar as our salad dressings. Um, and so I mainly am grabbing, I grab date syrup from here for baking. So I keep that in front. The molasses, not so much. I still haven't run out of my quart that I need to refill. So this is just here. And so, yeah, I have a whole bunch of space now to potentially put uh, some of these smaller items down here and get them off the shelf and make it look a little neater. Um, I could put um, some of these vinegars that I've picked up at Costco, but they're kind of nice and neat in boxes that stack. And so I think I'm going to leave them here for now. Um, and then focus on getting the condiments down in here. Um, and yeah, <laughs> just sort of go from there. Like I said, this is a very um, in ebb and flow flux kind of thing. Um, I, I never feel like it's 100% done because it's not. Like as you use stuff up, you're putting new stuff in those spots or whatever. And that's just sort of for me. I think that that's just the way that it goes. Um, and so lead, uh, it's really good to get through these processes. Sorry, my light is now behind me. Um, <laughs> because uh, again, not only are you uh, making sure that you're making really good use of your space, but constantly, well, not constantly, like it's been a while since I've gone through and really done, you know, like an organizational project like this. Uh, getting in there really lets you know what you have. I know now, like it's in my my consciousness now that I have um, 
two gallons of apple cider vinegar back here and, and all of that, like the things that I have, I know that I have them. Um, and then the same thing is going to happen as I'm putting away my condiments. Um, and I'm still going to try to arrange them in such a way that they can be seen um, as you're looking down. So some of the larger bottles might end up going towards the back, like the larger um, gallons, for instance, like again, the molasses. I, I don't really use a lot of the molasses. Um, so I can push that more towards the back and make sure that the things that are at the front are things that I can see. Um, and then also making sure that I can still access my coconut milk as I go through. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and just put that stuff down here and see how it looks. All right, all done. I love the way the shelves look much more neat now, much, <laughs> much more organized. Um, and then I've still kept everything so that I can see exactly what it is. Even just standing up, looking down, I can very clearly see what is there. Um, and so I really like that and I'm very happy with the way that turned out. Another thing I realized that can come up when you're going through these things and kind of moving around stuff around is being able to zero in on best buy dates, uh, or expiration dates. Um, and so for instance, on the little, uh, mushroom broth jars, which are these little things at the end the best buy date was December 10th of 22, which was two days ago. Now they'll still be good for quite a while after that, but now I know, and it's in my mind, okay, these guys just passed their best buy date. I should focus on using this as my broth flavoring in soups or whatever moving forward until it's gone. And then I can kind of go back to some other things that I use instead. But anyway, I just thought I would bring that up. And now I'm going to be getting the juices into kind of where my sparkling waters are. All right, next thing I'm doing is I'm going to be taking the outer packaging off of these, which is normally what I like to do when I'm putting stuff away. But things have just been kind of so busy lately, I haven't been keeping up on a lot of the kind of nitpicky things I like to do. And so I'm sort of just taking that time today to do the nitpicky things. Um, I like to remove things from their outer packaging to make them easier to grab and more accessible. It's like all of our little like convenience and, you know, in a rush and um, like lunchbox foods are here. Um, and so that's what these are for. Uh, that's why they're kind of here and not like in the pantry. They're sort of off the beaten path so that we don't just go through them, you know, like locusts through the <laughs> kind of more expensive prepackaged things. We would, all of us, not just my kids, like me too and Adam. So we keep them here too so that they are more, you know, designated for kind of those specific purposes. But yeah, I'm going to remove the outer packaging to make them easier to grab and um, get these kind of arranged in on top of the sparkling waters and yeah oh yeah my tomato paste most of you already know about my tomato paste habits right <laughs> some of you might be seeing that for the first time <laughs> the last step is to get through those big bags which because I want to just do it the fast and easy way, I will wait until I have access to my husband or my son for that part. Um, but uh, through the process, I figured I would share so far the things I need to put onto my Azure standard list for this coming month are parsley, coconut milk powder, almond meal, cumin seed, black peppercorn, mustard seed, minced onion, basil, celery seed, chili flakes, turmeric powder, and um, another thing of spirulina, which I found out <laughs> in this project. I think it's kind of funny because um, because I'm embroiled in this project and not wanting to stop to make lunch, we decided, or I decided, we're doing um, smoothies, like big smoothies for lunch, and we do spirulina in our smoothies. Um, and so I ran out of the spirulina that I have in the cupboard in my kitchen. And so I'm pulling this one from my shelf, the spare again, I always have a spare. Um, and then now I will be also ordering another bottle of that spirulina um, in my next Azure order, just to make sure we never run out. <laughs> so yeah, um, anyway, I like I said, I'm gonna wait until I have access to some bigger muscles. Uh, to deal with these so that I don't have to, if, if I were living, like if I lived alone or I didn't, you know, want to be lifting all of those, those bags, um, I would be partitioning it out into smaller portions, like into gallon size bags. Uh, but that takes a lot more time, um, and a lot more effort. And so I just want to do it the fast, easy way. So I'm going to wait until I have some muscles and then we will get that done quickly and I'll show you how we do it. We have had a video before showing how we do it, but I can always do it again. All right, here's my son getting the big bags into uh, the five gallon Mylar. 
Uh, these are all being reused. All of these Mylar bags have been used before. Um, and yeah, it's actually very easy to slip them right into the bag, just doing it on the floor like he just did. All right, so uh, I had two of these blue bags up there, which are basmati rice from um, Azure. And so we are getting ready to refill the basmati rice bucket because it's empty. But the two rice um, bags that were on the chair are now also up there. Again, thanks, thanks to my wonderful son. Um, I definitely would not be storing things like this if I didn't have access to st tall, strong men to help me out. So obviously, um, if, if you would not be able to deal with having stuff like that, then obviously don't store it like that. <laughs> um, but I, I'm able to, like I said, because I have access to these amazing, amazing men. Um, and so, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and refill the bucket. So the basmati rice bucket is pretty much empty. Um, I have done bay leaves, but at this point I kind of don't in the basmati rice bucket, at least because it is um, so constantly being emptied. Like it, we go through this rice so fast that I haven't even been accurately keeping track of how often we refill it. Cause it's basically every couple months we are going through, um, a 25 pound bag of rice, but the cost of the basmati, unfortunately it has me switching to, um, just like the plain rice from Costco. Um, but anyway, for a while, we'll get to continue enjoying our basmati. But then there, oh, sorry, honey. I guess could you reopen it really fast? Um, just so you see as a visual, this is a five gallon bucket. That was a 25 pound bag of rice. And so a five, pound, a five gallon bucket does not quite fill with a 25 pound bag of rice. So FYI. Okay, so here are my oxygen absorbers. I have a little, another bucket where I keep uh, Mylar bags and oxygen absorbers. Um, and so uh, I have disappointing stuff, but like at the same time, I'm slightly glad it happened so that you guys can see. Um, so if your oxygen indicator is still a nice healthy pink, then that means everything is good. But if it's purple, that means that it's gone bad and this is not honestly like a true purple like I've seen in the past um, so I'm wondering if the oxygen absorbers themselves have failed or if the eye has <laughs> because obviously there's no air in here but anyway regardless I won't be using these I'll be using different ones and so let's go ahead and go look up and see how you find out how much, how many oxygen absorbers to put into your bags. All right, I'm going to talk to you about how I know how, how I know how many oxygen absorbers to put into each bag. Um, and then this segment keeps taking way too long to film. So hopefully I can manage to do it kind of quickly. Um, this is potentially boring. <laughs> so I'm going to create chapters. So skip ahead if you don't need to hear this. Okay. Um, so I like to go to USA Emergency Supply, this site. I've actually printed this for myself in a binder so that I have it as a reference, like in case the site ever disappears or whatever. Um, and so you're going to get two numbers of how many cc's you need really per container. That's just the, the measurement that's used for oxygen absorbers and like how many, how much oxygen it will absorb. Um, and so you have a number for things that are more dense because there will be less air because the pieces are small and they'll stick close together. So less of the space will be, you know, air or oxygen versus something that's less dense, like a pasta or a bean, which has a lot more space which is a lot more air. And so as a general rule, I tend to just use the less dense number so that I can be absolutely 100% sure that I have got it covered. Um, and so if you would not like to do that, then go ahead and, you know, pick and choose which, you know, if you're doing rice, do the lower number. If you're doing, um, pasta definitely do the bigger number uh but just in general i, I tend to just use this number um you know I, I don't know i just do all right so now we're going to go down and see this is the um more dense line and this is the less dense line so this is the larger numbers so i have mylar bags i have a ziploc i have never seen it matter it doesn't look like any of the numbers are different between a mylar bag without a ziploc versus one that has a ziploc and so looking over here 
with the 100 cc, typically that's where you can do your math on exactly how many cc's they want in the bag so that you can combine as necessary. So it looks like they're wanting anywhere from 2,500 to 3,000 cc. So this is important to know because if you do, for instance, have a 2000 cc oxygen absorber, they're telling you to use two, right? Because they are trying to get you to 3000 or 2500 to 3000. So you're potentially um, maybe wasting a little bit if you are using these bigger ones. Um, so using combos can be good. I find it too fiddly. <laughs> <laughs> I have 100 and 300 cc oxygen absorbers because that's what's available from Azure Standard and that's what I purchase. So knowing that I'm aiming for 2,500 to 3,000 cc in this bag, I'm just going to use 10 300 cc oxygen absorbers per bag, which sounds huge, but coming over here, um, it is going to have, I'm going to basically use up almost an entire package, which is actually a good thing um, in one shot, but it's nice to know when you do the math because it feels like so much, but it's nice to know when you do the math, it's only going to be about a dollar per bag. So you're spending just a dollar on oxygen absorbers per 25 pound bag <laughs> to make sure that it's bug free and well preserved and waiting for you when you're ready to refill a bucket with it or whatever you're going to do. Um, so that's what I'm doing with my five, uh, with my 25 pound bags that I'm just putting the oxygen absorbers into the five gallon um, mylar. What that is, is basically a holding, it's a holding place <laughs> for refilling these working buckets. And that that's what that's for, for me. This is not a long-term storage. This is just making sure that bugs don't get out and get into my food like before I'm ready. But then also once I go to pour it into my buckets, bug eggs have already been killed and I have never, knock on wood, cross your fingers, um, I have never had um, bugs show up in any of my buckets doing this the way that I do it. And sometimes I'll have beans, I have had beans in just just one of my buckets just sitting out with no extra special anything uh, for close to two years, never see anything in there. So that's really good, right? Like that, that's pretty good. So anyway, this is just the way that I do it. But then just to show you uh, the math, say you had the 2000 CC, um, 50 cents each. If you had to use two, you're still looking at basically a dollar and it's overkill on the CCs. And then if you wanted to, you know, manipulate it and try to get it perfect, well, it's not that much cheaper. So I, I find my sort of for simplicity's sake and to keep myself sane, I'm just going to stick with like 100 and 300 cc because it works for so many things. And then it works when I want to go ahead and do some smaller, um, smaller bags, then it will work then too. But I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly <laughs> how I do this. So I have come along here and I originally picked this up from Provident Prepper, um, but I've come along in each bag and cut a slit into the actual bag inside. And so that's where I'm going to slip my oxygen absorbers. Then I'm going to squash out as much oxygen as I possibly can, as much air. And then I will come along and seal just with my flat iron. And then I already have what I'm using for my leftovers ready. Um, so I'll need to change this number. Um, and theoretically, there will be 10 left that I will be also putting into here. And so I learned, and I can't remember who it was, I think it was Guildbrook Farm, that if you put rice or some other, um, something that lasts a really long time, of course, <laughs> into a jar before you put your excess oxygen absorbers, then they have less work to do as far as um, removing oxygen. And so they'll stay better longer. And then I still have my little indicator in there and everything is still totally fine. So basically I'm just going to put the excess from here into here like as soon as I'm done. Okay, so I'm ready to go and thank you to my son for filming for me. Um, and so now this is open and I'm going to count 10, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, with these, I'm going to slip straight into the bag in that little slit and just 
go ahead now. And normally I'd kind of assembly line it, but I just want to show you guys at least one time what it looks like. So, to go ahead and seal this up. Oh, I've also labeled these so that I know what's in each one. And so, I'm just doing my best to get as much of it out as possible. It can be really awkward with these larger bags. And I probably didn't do as good a job as I could have, but anyway, here we go. And now, just your preheated iron, and you go across the top. And I typically try not to do too much so that, again, I can get many uses out of these bags. And I'm not as concerned about the fact that this one is wrinkly. So when the Mylar bag wrinkles, at every single point um, where it has wrinkled, there's a like a pinprick spot, I guess, where light can get through. So if I were storing the contents um, long term, that could be a problem. But also not quite as much as normal because of the fact that I'm putting the bag inside as well. So the bag is going to block light. So there's a few reasons why this is a good, good way to do it. So yeah, this one, this one's done. And basically I will do every other one exactly the same way. Okay, they are all completely finished. Um, and so now I'm just going to let them sit flat until they shrink as much as they're gonna shrink. And then I will fit, um, hopefully at least two of them kind of into that pile right there. Um, and then the other two, I'm still trying to plan what I'm doing with them. Um, yeah, <laughs> here we are. It's been a couple of days. The bags have shrunken up as much as they were going to. Honestly, leaving them overnight is enough. We've just been so busy. I haven't gotten to this <laughs> until now. I had my son put two of the bags up in this stack here. So now I'm just figuring out for myself where these two are going to go while I am waiting for the oxygen absorbers to do their trick of, you know, uh, killing the bug eggs and preventing future infestations. And so I need to go ahead and give that a bit of a think. All right, so over here in the corner, we have um, kind of a spot back here. Uh, we've got a couple of extra buckets. Sorry, it's so dark. <laughs> it's not really clear. A um, couple extra buckets. What I'm going to do is put the lid on top of this little stack of buckets right here. And then those two bags will just sit right back here upright. Kind of like this one. This is our, our bag of quick oats, which we did the same exact thing with the oxygen absorbers and all of that uh, to help keep them clean uh, for as long as we have them. But then... Um, they, they have since been opened. We've been using these, um, but they did sit for a few weeks with the oxygen absorbers just to make sure that they were set. Um, and that's just sort of how I do it. And I have not yet had any kind of bug infestation. Again, knock on wood, hopefully it's enough. Um, but that's the reason I do what I do. And then not everything can fit in <laughs> these buckets. Ideally, I'd have enough buckets for all of the things. But I feel like 12 buckets is, is a good amount, and I don't really want to expand beyond that. Um, but there are a couple of buckets here that I'm working on emptying, and once those are empty, I will be moving a couple of these other things into those buckets to sort of eventually get these buckets truly representing our most used uh, dry bulk items. Here they are. So quick oats are back here. Amaranth is going to be in front because that's the one that I'm going to be getting to faster. Green lentils are in the back because those are not going to be needing... I don't need to access those for quite a while because I just refilled a bucket with green lentils. Um, funny story though, <laughs> after hundreds and hundreds of Mylar bag seals, I have found my very first one that did not complete the seal. Um, this one was really hard to seal, my amaranth. Um, and so I failed the seal on this one. And so basically what I'm going to do is cut a little section out, throw 10 more 300 cc oxygen absorbers in there, and then reseal it and really check the seal this time to make sure that it, it's set. Um, I was just like super busy and I guess I just kind of went too fast and I, I didn't check it. So, um, yeah, we'll get to that 
in just a little bit, but we discovered that it wasn't quite sealed um, when we were putting them back there. Uh, but I'm still going to get it off the off the floor floor <laughs> and keep it over here and take care of that um, in just a little bit. But I'm not going to film it because this video is already getting really, really long. As kind of a final example of just how in flux this whole thing is, just like the day after I think I filmed, I went to make pasta. I decided I wanted to use my fusilli shape or fusilli or however it's pronounced. It's this kind of fun, long, basically like a long mac and cheese type shape. Um, and so my bucket was empty and I had to, or almost empty. I had to refill it and I realized, oh, I've got a 10 pound box of this pasta tucked in a weird place elsewhere. <laughs> so I had to bring that box out, refill my bucket. And now I have another five pound bag of pasta here that I'm not hundred percent sure where I'm putting it. Hopefully it will fit in one of these totes. As you've seen, these are my kind of, um, influx totes. If not, I'll probably just stick it up on top of that bag of basmati rice up there just to get it out of the way um, so that I have a hope of ever being able to use that chair for spinning ever again. <laughs> so anyway, um, I wanted to say one more thing. I sort of rearranged the top of my shelf too. A few weeks ago, for the first time ever, we went to an LDS um, cannery, even though I know that's not what it's called anymore. So I'll put on the screen what it's called now, uh, what you can look up. Um, I'll also leave a link down below to the site where you can go and see if you have one of these areas or one of these amazing little stores in your area. Um, we are not LDS. I so respect and appreciate that they do this though. But I just wanted to let you guys know that, not because I like have to let you know I'm not LDS or anything like that. I'm just letting you know that you don't have to be a member of the church to go and purchase. And so that that's really the point that I'm making. So if you can find one of these in your area, definitely go check it out. Each of these boxes has six cans, and then we have a couple of extra cans. And so these are these big cans. As they come to you, they have a 30 year shelf life if you keep them at, you know, 50 to 60 degrees, I believe. So ours are probably going to last more like 10 to 20 years because um, we don't have a um, cool enough space for them. But basically, they come to you totally ready, um, already done in these cans. There's oxygen absorbers in the can. Um, and then uh, once you've opened it, like when you decide you're going to use it, um, you can buy these lids there too. They're like 25 cents each. And then once the can is open, you just put your lid on. And then obviously that's not still like a 30 year shelf life, but that's, you know, just to keep it <laughs> relatively fresh as you're working through it. Um, and so we've already gone through one can of these apples because they're kind of the best things ever, like the most amazing little snack ever. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend um, the, whatever it is, it's like a home distribution center or something like that. I highly recommend this. If you have one in your area, definitely go check it out. It's great for anybody who doesn't have the time or the energy, or maybe who doesn't have the ability to lift and move, you know, heavy bags constantly because it just arrives to you already done. I believe also you can order online. Um, but yeah, it's just a great option for anybody who wants to get a head start without all of the work of putting the things in the Mylar bags and getting the oxygen absorbers and all of that. So anyway, yeah, 10 out of 10 would recommend. Although I do definitely say the rice you can get cheaper elsewhere, but again, you're getting it fully fully packaged and ready to go. So that might be 100% worth it to you. I also really like that they have on the side of the box, the total weight. So it's like there's each can is just over five pounds. It's a total weight of 32.4 pounds. So you know that that's basically a little bit more rice than a typical 25 pound bag. And I don't know, I just think that's pretty great. So yeah, totally would recommend. All right, there is the full <laughs> look at the vast majority of our food storage. Um, so there's definitely a few things I still kind of want to neaten up. Um, in my ideal world, it would be like over here where I neatened up these shelves that I wouldn't have anything sitting on the shelf in front of the totes in my ideal world. I don't know if that's possible. Uh, but I'd love to get there eventually. Um, and then, like I was saying, I do definitely want to figure out a place for all of these things right here uh, so that they're not on my food storage shelf. 
Um, but these are basically what I've used for a lot of my pre-made mixes. Like these guys right here are the only pre-made mixes I have out right now. They're my um, spaghetti sauce mixes where basically all I have to do is add water and tomato paste um, and this to a pan. And then I have my spaghetti sauce and it's super fast and easy to do. Um, I've got some dried herbs from my garden. Um, it was like conditioning over here. I need to go ahead and get those put away into my herbal cabinet. Um, there's still definitely a lot of stuff that I need to get done, but I'm happy with what progress I have made. Um, and yeah, so we'll sort of <laughs> see where we're going until the next big Azure order that makes me have to completely overhaul everything again. <laughs> right, hopefully you guys enjoyed a little look into, or might've been a really long look into <laughs> the pantry, some of the thought behind of, you know, the jobs that you have to do, some of the upkeep and the kind of moving around and stuff. Um, I, I don't know if you learned anything new or found anything super interesting. Definitely let me know in the comments down below if there was any particular thing that you found very helpful. Um, I'd love to hear about that. Um, but yeah, it's just sort of this constant flowing use up, replace, use up, replace ebb and flow that happens. And I don't think anything ever looks perfect. I have dreams and visions of perfection in my food storage and it just sort of doesn't really ever happen that way, but hey, <laughs> you know, we're doing what we can and I'm very happy with, with what we have and I feel very blessed and just hope to help other people figure out some ways that they can do it for themselves. And yeah, I guess that's it. And um, again, just comment down below. Let me know anything you'd like to know. And as always, I hope the rest of your day is good and your life stays wonderful. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys in the next one. Bye.